Om Jnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksuran Militanina Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Vanchakalpa Terubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pristaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschachyadesha Tarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare So Lord Ramachandra appears in the Treta Yuga and he is Maryada Avatar. Maryada, he shows the perfect etiquette, the perfect standard of behaviour, both as the son of Maharaj Dasarath and as the ruler, particularly as the king of Ayodhya, as the ruler of the kingdom there, after the demise of Maharaj Dasarath and after Lord Rama had completed his exile in the forest, then he came back and he was enthroned as the ruler. So he was always very strict in his behaviour and did, he did everything exactly according to principles. Principles as described are the standards for proper behaviour in the scriptures. For example, very obedient to the Father. We see the example that Maharaj Dattaras, one day he tells Lord Ramachandra that tomorrow I'm going to make you king. We're going to crown you as a king. But then that night Kaikeyi came and she polluted the mind of Maharaj Dasarath and she convinced Maharaj Dasarath that Ram should go to the forest and stay in the forest for 12 years or 14 years. So, Maharaj Dattaras had to tell Lord Rama that, no, we're not going to coronate you tomorrow. Instead, you're going to go to the forest and you will live as an ascetic there in the forest for 14 years. And you will dress in the bark of trees and you will eat whatever grows in the forest. And so, Lord Ramachandra immediately accepts, yes, Father, whatever you say, I will do. So this is Lord Ramachandra, very perfect in his behaviour. Of course, Lord Rama was married to Mother Sita, who is none different from the goddess of fortune. And we know how Ram, Ramayan describes how Mother Sita was kidnapped by Ravana. Ravana took Mother Sita away and uh, Lord Rama had to rescue Mother Sita and he had to come to Lanka with his army of bears and monkeys and they fought against Lord Ramachandra and Lord, they, Lord Ramachandra defeated the Rakshasas headed by Ravan and rescued Mother Sita. So Lord Ramachandra shows us a perfect example as a husband that oh, his wife was taken away, he did not rest until he could get her back, until he could bring her back. He wanted to uh, rescue her from the hands of the demon Ravana. So Lord Ramachandra was an ideal husband and then after he rescued her, then he wanted to show everyone her chastity. And it was arranged 
that a fire would be built. And Mother Sita entered into the fire to prove her chastity. And then from out of the fire, Agni came out, carrying Mother Sita. So the, uh, the Varaha Purana describes that actually Mother Sita was never touched by Ravan, but it was the Maya Sita who was taken by Ravan. Mother Sita is a the pure goddess of fortune, and she could never be touched by such a demon as such a Rakshasa as Ravan. So the, the, the person who Ravan took was simply a Maya Sita. He took a Maya Sita away with him. And when Lord Ramachandra built the fire and told Mother Sita to enter into the fire, the Maya Sita entered into the fire and the actual Mother Sita came out of the fire, held by Agni, the fire god. So this proved the chastity of Mother Sita. But unfortunately, even after this incident, still people doubted the chastity of Mother Sita. Because Ravan had kidnapped Sita for a period of one year. And everyone knew what kind of person Ravan was that he was very lusty. Ravan had actually already raped another uh, demigoddess. He had already raped uh, the, de the wife of Nala Kuvera. Nala Kuvera is one of the sons of Kuvera. And Nala Kuvera had a very beautiful young wife. And Ravan became very attracted to her, so much so that he ravished her against her will. And Nala Kuvera was not powerful enough to be able to do anything about it himself because he knew Ravan to be very powerful. But what he did do was put a curse on Ravan that if he ever did this again to any other woman, he would certainly die. And this curse was confirmed by Lord Brahma that yes, if Ravan ever does this again, he will certainly die. And so in this way, Ravan was restricted. He wasn't able to exploit Mother Sita. Of course, he didn't have the real Sita anyway. It was a Maya Sita. So Lord Ramachandra shows us a wonderful example of uh, being very faithful to his wife, rescuing his wife from the hands of Ravan and killing Ravan. And then after Mother Sita became disturbed, that so many people were talking and doubting her chastity, she understood it wasn't going to be very helpful for her husband to be the emperor. Because one who is the ruler, people have to have full faith and trust in him. So Mother Sita understood that so long as she's present, it will be a problem for her husband. So after Mother Sita had delivered the twin sons, Love and Kush, and after they'd grown up a bit, then Mother Sita returned to the earth. So after Mother Sita returned to the earth, Lord Ramachandra was left alone without a wife. But he's an emperor, he's a king. And the king should always have his wife there. Particularly when they perform rituals, it's necessary that the husband is there with his wife. But Mother Sita had already entered the earth, so Rama had no wife. And Rama took a vow, Eka Patni Vrat, only one wife. He would not accept another wife. So what he did whenever he performed the yagya, he would have a deity of Mother Sita sit beside him. And the, the, the Mother, Sita, Mother Sita was present in the form of the deity. And in this way, Lord Ramachandra performed the rituals of the king. So Lord Ramachandra ruled the world in a very exemplary manner. Even today, we hear about Ram Raja, the perfect government of Lord Ramachandra. Everyone was, everyone was happy, everyone was looked after, everyone was satisfied. There was no scarcity, there was no problem. Everyone was very happy and satisfied. It was the ideal government. So everyone talks about today Ram Raja. But if you want Ram Raja, 
you have to have Lord Ramachandra to rule. And if you want Lord Ramachandra to rule, we have to become Rama conscious, we have to become God conscious devotees. And then we can feel the presence of Lord Ramachandra. So Lord Ramachandra performed many wonderful pastimes. Jayadeva Goswami glorifies him in the Dasa Avatar Stotra, which is in the Gita Govinda. Uh, Vitarasi Dikshu Rame Dikpati Kamaniyam Dasha Mukamoli Balim Ramaniyam Keshavadrita Rama Sharira Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare Jai Jagadisha Hare So Jai Deva Goswami glorifies Lord Ramachandra by describing how he offered the ten heads of Ravan. Ravan was such a powerful Rakshasa that he had ten heads. But Lord Ramachandra offered these heads in the ten directions. In this way, uh, Jayadeva Goswami glorifies Lord Ramachandra. And another wonderful pastime performed by Lord Rama was that when he went to rescue his wife, they had found out that Mother Sita was being held captive in Lanka. And Lanka was 800 miles away from the coast. So Lord Ramachandra meditated on the shore of the ocean for three days. And he was met thinking how to cross the ocean. And at one point, the ocean became so disturbed by the thought, by the meditation of Lord Ramachandra, that all the aquatics began to feel the water boiling. The water became so hot due to the meditation of Lord Ram. So then Samudra, the, oh, the, the personified deity of the ocean, appeared before Lord Ramachandra and requested Lord Ramachandra that you kindly build a bridge across the ocean. Because Lord Ramachandra has an army of bears and monkeys. So Hanuman, he could jump across the ocean. But not everybody in the army can do that. So Lord Ramachandra wants to bring the whole army to Lanka to fight in the battle. So they built a wonderful bridge from the southernmost point of India, from uh, Danish Koti or Tsetobandu, and they built the bridge right across the ocean, 800 miles into the island of Lanka. And in this way, they built this bridge. Apparently, it took only five days, and it was built by great workers like Hanuman and uh, Sugriva and Anga, and different bears, different monkeys, and, and they all helped to build the bridge. Within five days, they built an 800 mile long bridge across the ocean, and they all marched across that bridge to Lanka and fought the battle of Lanka against Ravan, and then Lord Ramachandra killed all the demons like Ravan and Kumbhakarn, as well as the different sons of Ravan, like Indrajit, they were all killed. And then Lord Ramachandra rescued Mother Sita and brought her back to Ayodhya. So those are some of the highlights of Lord Ramachandra. Any questions on Lord Rama? Anyone like to ask? Any questions from the participants? You see, we also chant the Maha Mantra, and in the Maha Mantra, there's the name of Lord Ram. So we are also chanting the name of the holy name of Lord Ram as well as the name of Lord Krishna. Lord Ramachandra is avatar of Lord Krishna. Yes, Aditi Dharana Das Prabhuji, please sir, ask your question. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, and all Vaishnavas, please accept my obeisances. I have one question. Are you hearing me? 
Yes, Adri Dhan, I'm hearing you, Prabhu. Go Krishna, ahead. Guru Maharaj, uh, you mentioned that in Hare Krishna Mantra we have the name of Lord Rama. And should we um, sing some bhajans in Rama Navami, I mean Raghupati Raghava or something else, or just enough uh, singing Kirtan, Hare Krishna Kirtan, I mean, uh, during the Rama Navami event? Srila Prabhupada so, told us on that day of Ram Nomi we could sing Raghupati Raghava Racharam, Raghupati Raghava Sitaram. So, just that day, Ram Nomi. You don't have to sing it other days, but at least on Ram Nomi we could sing this song, glorifying Lord Ramachandra. Short, very short, a uh, little mantra. Ragu pati ragava raga ram, pati tapavana sita ram. Sita ram jai sita ram, sita ram jai sita ram. And we also have Jai Dev Goswami's uh, glorification in the Das Avatar Stotra. So, yes, we can sing. Thank you so much. Okay, um, Vaishnavi. Yes, uh, Guru Maharaj, here Simon has a question. Yes. Which language speak the monkey? We from? Uh, Simon is asking, what is the language that monkey can speak? <laughs> English, no? English, uh, she is asking whether it's in, what is the language? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You have to understand these monkeys are not ordinary monkeys. They're demigods who have all come down to take, past, take part in the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. Ravan had committed many atrocities and he had taken benedictions from Brahma that he could not be killed by any demi, by any de, he could not be killed by any demigod or by any demons. But he was so proud, he thought, ordinary people and animals, they cannot trouble me. They could not, they, there's no way ordinary people and any animal could ever give me any trouble. So he did not take any benediction to protect himself against them. But he did get the benediction that the demigods and the, the demons would never trouble him. So this, uh, this was known, of course, to Lord Vishnu. So he instructed the different demigods that if you want to get relief from this demon Ravan, because he was take, creating so much disturbance in the universe, that to get relief from the disturbance of Ravan, you demigods should all appear as monkeys. And you should appear as very powerful monkeys with big strong bodies. And in this way you can take part. And some of you can also become bears. So we have some wonderful bears like Jambavan and uh, there's some other bears also and even they come, they stayed in, in they appeared in Krishna Leela. So you have to understand these demigods when they come down as in the form of monkeys and not just simply gibberish monkeys. They're powerful, very powerful and strong and they big strong bodies. And they're also very intelligent, highly intelligent. And we hear about Hanuman and his wonderful uh, behavior and how he's so respectful and he gives so much honor and respect to Lord Ramachandra. So how they communicate, what language? Uh, well, Lord, Lord Krishna, he could speak all the languages. He could speak with the cows, he could speak with the birds. So certainly a Lord Ramachandra also would be able to communicate. And even when Hanuman had gone to Lanka, there was a con there's conversation between Ravan and Hanuman. So even Ravan, although he was a demon, he was able to converse with Hanuman. So what, what, you, what particular language they use, maybe it's, uh, we don't know, it's Sanskrit. In the past, everyone spoke Sanskrit. Okay, 
Fernando Prabhu, uh, please ask your question. Yes, yes. Hare Krishna Guru Mahatma. So I would like to know if is the, the Ramayana book is the best book to know about more about Lord Ram or can you recommend me another book or something to know more about Lord Ram, please? Uh -huh. uh, Srila Prabhupada told us the authorized version of Lord Ramachandra's pastimes is Valmiki Ramayana. So ideally you'd like to get hold of the Valmiki Ramayana and read that. And there is one devotee, a very nice devotee, very knowledgeable, scholarly devotee, who lives here in Mayapur, and he's in the process of translating the Valmiki Ramayana. Uh, he's doing it verse by verse, and it's coming out gradually. A few books have already come out, and a few more are planned. So, you can read that, Valmiki Ramayana. Uh, you, can also, okay. you can also check in Srimad Bhagavatam. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, you get, a particularly in the ninth canto, there's two chapters in the ninth canto describing the pastimes of Lord Ramachandra. But it's a summary. It's a summary. Sukadeva Goswami said there's already so much about Lord Ramachandra. He didn't want to spend a lot of time speaking about Lord Ramachandra because there's already so much been written on it. And we do have versions, different versions within ISKCON in the English language. One book is published by His Holiness Bhaktivikas Swami, and another book is published by uh, Krishna Dharma Prabhu, who is from the UK, and another book is published by Purna Pragna Prabhu, I believe. I believe. I'm not sure about Purna, I think Purna Pragna also has one. But certainly Bhaktivikas and Krishna Dharma, they are the two main ones we see around most of the Ramayana. His Holiness Satsvarupa Goswami Maharaj uh, wrote uh, a very nice uh, essay on Lord Ramachandra's pastimes. It was published in the Back to Godhead a very long time ago, many years ago. It should be in the folio, in the Veda base, if you check the Veda base. But there is a lot of information about Lord Ramachandra available. And the incarnations of Lord Krishna are all mentioned, like in the, in the fir first canto, chapter 3, you have the incarnations of the Lord, so Lord Ramachandra is mentioned there. And then, again, it comes up in the ninth canto. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. I I wrote all of them. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Guru Maharaj, I have a question. Like, uh, comparing Ramayana and Mahabharata, uh, Mahabharata is like uh, more like uh, politics and some things like that. So, is it like Ramayana is better to read because it is more about Rama, Lord Rama, and we can get more bhakti by reading Ramayana than Mahabharata? Uh, yes, I would think, I would agree with you that you may get, I think you could get more bhakti from Ramayana than from Mahabharata. Jiva Goswami said, Jiva Goswami, one of the principal disciples of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, one of the six Goswamis who resided in Vrindavan after Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Jiva Goswami wrote extensively about the scriptures and he said, that nobody ever got love of Godhead from the Mahabharat, because the Mahabharat deals a lot with uh, ritualistic activities, karmakanda activities, and not a lot about bhakti. And we see, although the Bhagavad Gita is there in the Mahabharat, it's kind of covered, it's, it's not given much prominence. Although it is there in Mahabharat, and Bhagavad Gita is very important scripture, but still, you know, it, it's a very tiny part of the Mahabharat. So I, I certainly would agree that there's a lot of bhakti there in the Ramayana. And by reading Ramayana, you can also develop your bhakti. 
I was hearing one devotee speaking about Ramayana recently and he was saying that uh, all the rasas are there within the Ramayana except for Parakya Ras. Parakya Ras means, you know, the relationship between man and woman outside of marriage. So that's there with Krishna Leela. You get Parakya Ras. But with Lord Ramachandra it's only Swakya Ras. It's only men and women married, married men and women, as well as other rasas, Vatsalya Ras, Sakya Ras, um, like that, they're all there. And Gayatri Mantra is also there within the Ramayana as well. In the Gayatri Mantra, just like in Srimad Bhagavatam, the first verse in the Srimad Bhagavatam begins with the Gayatri Mantra, and then also Srimad Bhagavatam ends with the Gayatri Mantra, with the Dimahi from the Gayatri Mantra. So within Ramayana also, the Valmiki wrote the Ramayana in such a way that the Gayatri Mantra is also there within the Ramayana. So the purpose of the Gayatri Mantra is meditation on Krishna. But with Gayatri Mantra there are many rules and regulations. You have to be of a particular caste, and you have to chant at a particular time, so many things. But reading Ramayana or Srimad Bhagavatam, you can do that any time and you get bhakti. So it's a very good way, reading Ramayana. We give great, we give, of course, we give more importance to Srimad Bhagavatam because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's mood was that. But, you know, some people have a lot of bhakti for Lord Ramachandra. They have devotion for Lord Ramachandra. That's also allowed. They have their own place in Vaikuntha. Lord Ramachandra also has his own abode there in Vaikuntha. Ayodhya is also there where all his devotees reside. Yes? Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Yuna Mataji, please go ahead. Uh, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Uh, we are conditional, conditioned souls and uh, it is very difficult for us to understand the best times of Lord. For example, devotions often ask why Rama banished Sita, why Pandavas did not protect Draupadi, or why Bhishma uh, didn't support Pandavas, etc. And uh, what level of devotional service should we be to understand these Leelas? And uh, what kind of anathas uh, keep us from understanding uh, the, these uh, best times of the Supreme Lord? Well, thank you. <laughs> yes, some people are very uneducated, it's so difficult for them to appreciate these things, these kind of pastimes, like uh, as you mentioned, uh, M Mother Sita being sent from home, not actually vanquished, but Lord Ramachandra just considered that if people are criticizing him, then it's very bad for him as a ruler, that he cannot rule effectively if there's any doubts or criticism about him. Therefore he decided that Mother Sita should go and live in Valmiki's ashram. So it wasn't that Lord Ramachandra completely neglected her. Valmiki's ashram was within the kingdom of Lord Rama and by sending her to Valmiki's ashram she was given proper care and protection. Remember, at this time she was already pregnant, she had already conceived, she was carrying the children in her womb. So Lord Ramachandra had her sent to Valmiki's ashram that she would stay there and be taken care of. So it wasn't that he completely neglected her, he made arrangements for her and for her protection. But he had to consider the importance of his position as the ruler. Now you may say, well, he could have given up being the ruler. Maybe he should have just given up being the ruler. But remember, Lord Ramachandra comes to show us the example of the perfect ruler. What is the standard for the perfect ruler? So he's setting an example for everyone by his behavior. So that is the point. And again, then you talk about, what about the Pandavas? Why didn't the Pandavas come and help Draupadi? Well, they wanted to, but Maharaj Yudhisthira was, he wouldn't let them because he said, 
you know, the, the Kshatriyas, they have this, they, they're not allowed. If they gamble and they lose something, and then they don't have any claim over it anymore. And so it was like that. The, the Pandavas had gambled and they'd lost. And one of the stakes happened to be Draupadi. And when they lost Draupadi, they could not do anything about it. But of course, Bhim made vows that he would get revenge. And he did. He killed all the sons of Dhritarashtra. And not only did he kill all the sons of Dhritarashtra, he ripped out the heart of Dushasan, the one who was mostly responsible for taking Draupadi and trying to disrobe her. And he ripped out the heart and this Dushasan had untied the hair of Mother Draupadi and so Draupadi vowed that she would not tie her hair again until she got the blood from that person to wash her hair. So Bhima arranged to give her the blood of that person on her hair so that she could again tie her hair. So like that, I mean, it's unusual, remember, it was very special. It was not Kali Yuga, there were special codes involved. They were Kshatriyas, there was still some Varnashram. And they were Kshatriyas and they were obliged to follow some of the, the principles of Varnashram, the principles of Kshatriyas. So these things people are not very familiar with and difficult for them to understand. It's a problem. Therefore, we encourage people, try to understand Bhagavad Gita from the beginning. Try to understand who you are. Before you try to understand the pastimes of Krishna and the pastimes of Lord Rama, before you under, un, try to understand these things, try to understand first of all who you are. That you're not the body, you're a soul and you're struggling with your mind and senses. So take it step by step. Don't try to jump over everything and go to the highest thing. Try to understand the basic thing, who you are and how we're struggling with our mind and senses. Then gradually you can go on to higher things. Is it clear, Yuna? Yes, Guru Maharaj is correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, Vaishnavi. Guru Maharaj, uh, this is about Bhagavad Gita, right? Eh? Yes. Uh, Guru Maharaj, uh, uh, what should we do now? Should we go for ch chanting or should we read Bhagavad Gita? Or we have... Uh, yeah. yeah. Yes? Whatever you like. Okay, Guru Maharaj. Maybe, can we read the one verse of Bhagavad Gita? Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, I, I can see. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. 4.2 Evam param para praktam imam raja rashayo viduho sakali nahi mahata yogo nashta parantapa. Translation The supreme science was thus received through the chain of disciplic succession. And the saintly kings understood it in that way. But in course of time, the succession was broken and therefore the science as it is appears to be lost. Purport, it is clearly stated that Gita was specially meant for the saintly kings because they were to execute its purpose in ruling over the citizens. Certainly 
Bhagavad Gita was never meant for the demonic persons who would dissipate its value for no no one's benefit and who devise all types of interpretations according to personal views. As soon as the original purpose was scattered by the motives of the by of the unscrupulous commentators, there arose the need to re-establish the disciplic succession. Five thousand years ago, it was deducted by the Lord Himself that the disciplic succession was broken. and therefore he declared that the purpose of gita appeared to be lost in the same way at the present moment also there are so many editions of the gita especially in english but almost all of them are not according to authorized disciplic succession there are innumerable interpretations rendered by different mundane scholars but almost all of them do not accept the supreme personality of god at krishna although they make a good business on the words of sri krishna This spirit is demonic because demons do not believe in God but simply enjoy the property of the supreme since there is a great need of the edition of gita in english as it is received by the parampara system an attempt is made there with to fulfill this great want bhagavad gita accepted as it is is a great boon to humanity but if it is accepted as a treatise of philosophical speculations it is simply a waste of time <laughs> very important purport very important verse so shrila prabhupada is encouraging us don't just simply think of it as some philosophy for our speculation but try to understand how this knowledge how it's been passed through the disciplic succession and prabhupad pot talks about the great need of the addition of the gita in english as it is received by the parampara disciplic succession so although there's so many bhagavad gitas we don't see these other bhagavad gitas coming in the disciplic succession in other words people write the bhagavad gita they present their own philosophy they don't present bhagavad gita as it is but they present bhagavad gita as they think it is or as they would like it to be but they're not presenting the actual message of the bhagavad gita which is what krishna gave rather they use it to present their own philosophy just like sometimes people say oh bhagavad gita the message of bhagavad gita is about non violence well how could it be like that the bhagavad gita is spoken on a battlefield and krishna is getting arjuna to fight how could the bhagavad gita be about non violence just simply philosophical speculation no value so lord krishna is describing how he he used this process of disciplic succession but in course of time the knowledge was lost the succession was broken and, <coughs> and therefore krishna had to come again and reestablish it so yoga nashta parantapa yoga nashta the disciplic succession was broken this is very important that we don't allow that to happen again why does it how did it happen that this, the disciplic succession became broken people changed the meaning they gave it some other interpretation they didn't stick to the original message as meant by lord krishna and as given by the pure devotees but they gave their own message their own interpretation of the bhagavad gita and this created havoc this ruined the whole effect of bhagavad gita so it's not enough just to have bhagavad gita you have to have the bhagavad gita as it is as krishna spoke it you have to understand the real message of the bhagavad gita and not change it shrila prabhupada often told us he said don't change anything 
don't change anything. Of course, it's very difficult to do because so many things are changing. And you, we see, for example, nowadays, this year, last year, how much things have changed from previous years. That we cannot travel and communicate so easily, so we have to use these uh, internet and other, t other kinds of telecommunication to keep in touch with devotees in other places. So, the point is, we don't want to change anything, but at the same time, sometimes the details will be different. The principles should remain the same, but the details may change. May change. Just like details, you know, when you're, in, when you're in India, when you're in South India, you will be eating uh, dosa in Idlis. But when you go to Switzerland, you may find it difficult to get dosas in Idlis, and you may ha end up eating Italian spaghetti more than dosa in Idli. Mm, things change, you know, different places. But the, the details change, but the principle is the same. The principle is that wherever we eat, it's prasadam, and it's vegetarian, and we offer it to Krishna. So Bhagavad Gita also, there are principles to be taught in the Bhagavad Gita. And the essential principle is to surrender to Krishna and to take the knowledge through the disciplic succession, to hear, as mentioned here, hear from the saintly kings. Evam parampara praptam imam rajarshayo vidu. From the rajarshis, the rajarishis, saintly kings. We want to hear from these people. We don't want to hear from some politician or some movie star or some actress or something. We want to hear from the pure devotee, the one who has actually taken shelter of Lord Krishna and his teachings. So the ISKCON society, Hare Krishna movement, is meant to show how to apply the message of the Bhagavad Gita how to practice the teachings of the Bhagavad Gita. Do you all agree? Yes. Yes, Guru Maharaj. No arguments, huh? <laughs> Simon has a question that uh, a rough estimate is that the Gita was spoken at least 120, 400,000 years ago. And it, in human society, it has been extant for two million years. It was re-spoken by Lord again to Arjuna about 500 years ago. Where I can find the older version of Bhagavad Gita without Arjuna? <laughs> well, you have to understand in those days there was no books. Everything was spoken and people had such good memories they would hear and they would remember. Right? They, they didn't have to write things down. This is only in Kali Yuga that in recent times that our memories have become so poor that everything has to be written down and recorded. But before that, people would simply hear. They would hear one time and they would remember everything. So where can you find the, the Bhagavad Gita? There's no difference, you should understand, there's no difference between the Bhagavad Gita which was spoken to the Sun God and the Bhagavad Gita t we're reading today. Hare Krishna, are you hearing me? Yes, Guru Maharaj, we are hearing you. Okay. Uh, Thank you very much. So the, the message of the Bhagavad Gita is, is the same. It's surrender to Krishna. That's the idea. The same principle is there today as it was there in the times of uh, the sun god Vivishwan and Manu, the father of mankind. Well, these people are still there. Just that Lord Krishna, of course, he spoke Bhagavad Gita to Arjuna, he spoke in Sanskrit. Now, you can hear 
you can hear Lord Krishna's words as spoken to Arjuna 5,000 years ago. You can hear Dharma Kshetre, Kuru Kshetre, you know, this is, of course, that's Tritarashtra speaking. But Krishna is saying, Sarva Dharma Pargyajna Mamikam Sharanam Braja. Krishna is saying, Surrender to me. So he spoke 5,000 years ago, and the same instruction was given to Manu and to Ikshvaku and to Sun God Vivishwan. Nothing's really changed. The same message. Yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Are we going to do Kirtan? Yeah, yeah. Yes, Guru Maharaj, we have planned a, a three minutes drama with the chill, two of the young devotees. Oh, wonderful. So we will just uh, uh, highlight that to you, Guru Maharaj, now. Just uh, one, we need one minute to reset uh, these things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 